We live in an era of shallow gestures. The highly talented and popular actor Alan Cumming has returned his OBE due to recent conversations he's had about Britain's colonial past and our links to slavery. So what's he been doing for the other 13 and a half years in which he hung on to that title? Alan doesn't know whether he's coming or going. It's hard to imagine this well-read and insightful performer wasn't aware of the British Empire prior to these recent conversations, whose crimes are not limited, of course, to England. Millions accrued by Scottish slave owners helped bankroll the construction of some of Scotland's great cities as well. Now, this actor has a conscience and a big heart and is understandably horrified by our links to slavery, which is, of course, one of the most evil aspects of history, fair enough. But how does it help the world for him to hand back this gong? Refusal in the first place, 14 years ago, would have been more powerful. But to accept it, to sit on it for over a decade and then hand it back is too little too late. And I believe it's just another example of virtue signalling from a member of the elite making yourself look good without actually changing the world. These gestures are everywhere now. People have Ukraine flags on their Twitter bios. What the hell does that achieve? Many people's Facebook and Instagram feeds preach the message of be kind as they pour vitriol on anyone they disagree with. The cervix-free leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer, faced a mixture of admiration and opprobrium from the public when he fell to his knees in the wake of the horrific murder of George Floyd in the United States. Here's the image. Many applauded his actions here as a rejection of the evil of racism, whilst others mocked the sheer opportunism of it and its emptiness as a gesture. It's much easier, of course, to indulge in these gestures than actually make a real difference. Will you hear a squeak from these people about the modern-day slavery that's a bigger trade now than ever, like the thousands of tragic children and teenagers standing knee-height in mud for 12 hours a day, mining for lithium in the Congo to power the electric cars of which our virtue-signalling elites are so keen? For politicians, media figures, leading academics, it seems that a gesture is all it takes. Corporations do the same, of course, with meaningless slogans. How absurd for one particular oil giant to have a rainbow flag of inclusivity in their petrol station or green messaging as they flog the world polluting fossil fuels. What about millionaire footballers taking the knee in Qatar? Qatar being a hotbed of prejudice and human inequality. And yes, modern day slavery. And local authorities are at it too with the bizarre decision to rename the famous Black Boy Lane in Haringey in London. It's called Black Boy Lane, that's its name, uh, which, as the Mail's Robert Hardman points out today in the paper, cost over £100,000 to change the street name and was a decision made by the council without any clear evidence the locals objected to it. Hardman claims in his article that 81% of residents on Black Boy Lane in fact rejected the idea of a name change when the council finally got round to asking for their opinions with no objections from members of the black community. Now, I don't know if those figures are true and the council are clearly concerned about people being offended by this name, which could upset locals and foment racist sentiment. That's why they've done it. They're not bad people. But I do think they're misguided. It's now called La Rose Lane. But the start sign still says, formerly, Black Boy Lane. So you've got La Rose Lane underneath, formerly, Black Boy Lane. So presumably, we're still offending people. You couldn't make it up. Will this expensive name change tackle the scourge of racism? You tell me. The twisted genius of wokeism, or extreme political correctness as it's known, is its appropriation of the concept of niceness. If you're woke, you are nice. So it goes. Even though the woke, be kind brigade are some of the most vicious bullies out there. 
illiberal, cruel and, of course, the architects of cancel culture. We have replaced real action for change with actual gesture politics. You send a tweet, you pose for a photo or you send back a royal gong and it's job done. In my view, the only thing that virtue signalers really signal is their shallowness, their vanity and their eye-watering hypocrisy. Do us all a favour and have a day off.